Hey everyone, it's Mary from SVG Cuts here to show you how to put together the new wallflowers projects. I just finished making the mega wallflower for the second time and I spread apart the bottom two layers even more to make it this big. So super cool. You can really change them up how they look depending on the way that you make them. And each one has a nice sturdy hanger on the back which is nice and thick and reinforced. So you can hang it from your choice of whatever. I used a small wire command repositionable hook for mine. Um, you could use a nail or a string, whatever um, you have in mind. So depending on the colors that you use, it could be really cool as home decor right on the wall. A cluster of them looks really pretty. Um, you could put it in your office, craft room, above a crib in a nursery or in a kid's room. You could definitely do it as party decor. It would look gorgeous on um, on a like a wedding arch it would be beautiful, um, or as wedding de wedding decor, wedding shower decor, baby shower decor, um, a birthday party, whatever whatever you do, it's going to be really special and really wow factor. So I can't wait to see how you make yours. You'll definitely have to share pictures with us if you do, and I've got everything ready to to put together. So let's do this. So all three sizes of the flower start the same way. First I'm going to put together the small one, then to make the medium one we'll add to it, and to make the large one we'll add to that. So for all the flowers, this is how they start, and I'm going to make the small one right now. First we've got these four small pieces, which are the center. Then we've got 15 layers, which are numbered. Your machine will have cut a number into each shape and if you want to be able to see it better you can darken, darken that in with a pen or pencil. I'm going to do that just for this video so that it's easier to see on camera. Totally optional but I've got them all in order and I'm going to layer them or label them rather right now. First for this smallest shape, I'm going to bend it like this. Then for the next shape, I'm going to take my glue and put a dot here and then bend it behind and hold it for a minute as it dries. And you can gently curve the edge of the shape if you would like to. Totally optional. Pretty much this whole entire process, all of the steps are optional. You can get creative and do whatever you would like to do. I'm going to show you how I put how I put them together. And every time I do one of these, they come out slightly different, which is great because just like real flowers, they're all a little bit different. So I'm basically going to work my way through every single layer doing this as they get bigger and bigger and bigger.
Next I'm going to move on to piece number one and just keep doing the same thing. So as the petals start to get bigger, when you curve the edge, if you would like, you can grab a wooden dowel or any kind of object like this and use that to curve the edges. So whatever you've got, maybe a marker or a long paintbrush if you have that. or a wooden dowel. And you just want to be careful that you're not ripping the petal. And you can really go over or under either way, it doesn't matter. So each little petal is different, which creates a, a nice realistic look for your flower. And if you want to see where to put your glue, you can bend it first and then leave your, your thumb here and you can see that you can put glue there. If you want to be more meticulous about it like that, you can. So again, I'm holding it as it dries and curving the edges a little bit. At this point, if you want to use a glue gun, I'm going to be using a glue gun for putting some of these together. Once all the petals are done, when I'm, when I'm done doing what I'm doing now, I'm going to be using my glue gun for a couple parts. So if you want to plug yours in now, let it get warmed up so that it's ready when you need it. You can do that. And if you wanted to make this without curving the petals, that would look great too. It would just be a different look. So if you're making a cluster of flowers, you might wanna make one without curved petals or two or three just to add some variety to the look of your flowers.
So I glued this one pretty far over, which I don't think I did last time. I'm gonna take some scissors and trim this off just in case it happens to be showing when I'm done with my flower.
Next, I'm gonna layer up all of these shapes, smallest to largest. There's not really a right or wrong way to do it. And you can use a wide variety of adhesives. I've got some regular glue out. I've got some dimensional adhesive foam squares. I've got um, some of these large um, dimensional dots. I even, you know what, just to kind of prove a point, I even got out my um, packaging tape. I know it's not meant really for crafts that are gonna last forever, um, but if you're making some for a party or something and you wanna use that, you can really use whatever you want. I've got my glue, gl glue gun plugged in and I've got some of these adhesive squares out. So whatever you wanna do is totally cool. So I'm gonna add some dimension here and there with some of my dimensional adhesive, such as the small ones, some small adhesive dots on these small pieces. So I'm just kind of make sure, making sure that it looks cute and that it's covering up some of the interior parts that are kind of wacky. And I'm just gonna build, build on top of each piece here. And again, there's really not a, a right or wrong way to configure it. It's just whatever you think looks nice and kind of balanced. And you can just go for it. So I'm gonna glue this one down. Or no, you know what? I'm gonna use a large foam square. But again, not necessary. You can totally just glue everything, glue gun everything, whatever floats your boat. So you can just keep layering one on top of, you know, one underneath, underneath, underneath. Or if you want to do it in some segments, I might, I might do that a little bit too. So this is definitely the fun part where you get to see your, your flower really come together. So on to number four. So even just this by itself is really pretty. And if you look in the main extras folder of your download, every single shape is saved individually. So if you wanted to just cut out the first, you know, the small ones and then one through four, you can make this, make it bigger, make it smaller a little bit. It is totally up to you and whatever your uh, creative inspiration is. So I'm going to keep layering these guys up, however I think the petals look nice, probably about like this, or maybe like that. So it's really up to you, again you can just kind of play around with it until you are loving it using whatever adhesive you have in mind is totally cool and you definitely do not need to do it exactly like I'm doing mine and there are, there's kind of some wackiness going on with the shapes, which is okay, it's intentional, because I feel like it just creates a more realistic looking flower. And so 
So don't fret if you are, if you're not feeling confident about where you're placing, placing your shapes, just don't sweat it. Just, just do what looks nice and it's gonna look awesome. So it's getting to be a little bit of a tight squeeze. I can use regular glue, I can keep on using my adhesive dots, but at this point I feel like a nice glob of hot glue is going to be a great choice to really secure that in there because it's starting to encounter a little bit of like friction and tension. So I'm going to hold that for a minute and then keep going. Next for these pieces that have the two holes, my original intention was for those to kind of be guidelines. You can line them up if you would like, except um, 11 and 13 don't have the holes. Um, however, you do not need to strictly adhere to using those as guidelines. You might be happier with it if you just kind of freeform it and do whatever you think looks nice. That's what I'm gonna recommend, although if you really want to line them up, they're just there as guidelines if you want to do that. So here are pieces 9 through 15 glued together, and I'm going to affix this in the center. But also, if you feel like, gosh, I sure would like it if this petal was maybe moved over a little bit when everything is said and done, there's no, nothing wrong, no shame in moving that over. So I'm going to go ahead and move one of them down here, and I'm more happy with the way that that looks. So we'll just glue that on to... and then glue my flower inside. Glue my flower inside my flower. Okay. 
At this point, if you would like to make the backer for your small flower, you can take these pieces like this and glue them together one on top of the other to create a nice strong shape. And then you can hot glue this onto the back wherever you would like. So if you want to decide which way you want your flower to be hanging, like I think this looks nice, but it doesn't really matter. So I would like this to be the top of mine. So I want to glue this on so that the hole is near the top for hanging. So to do that, I'll just cover this with some glue. Hot glue is great for this and let it dry just like that. Now if you're making the medium flower, you've got some more pieces. We've got this circle with the five circles and five petals that look like this. So again, how you wanna do it is 100% up to you. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing mine. So if you wanna curve, curve this more, it's gonna, obviously it's gonna make your petal more shaped like this. If you wanna gently curve it, then your petal is gonna be more flat. I'm gonna go about have these and pretty much just line it up with these two circles. But again, it's completely your call, it's your flower, your project. And I think it's nice if you're making a cluster of flowers to do each one a little bit different and it will look even more realistic and cool. So I'll start by overlapping each of my five petals the same way. Next I'm gonna take my paintbrush and you could curve the top like this, or you could curve the sides. It's totally up to you. It makes it look a little different either way. I'm gonna curve the sides on mine, but on another one that I did, I curved just the top. And I think it's really pretty both ways. So again, if you're making a cluster, it's nice to actually change it up and do them, do each flower slightly differently different colors, different shapes, or same color, same shape, whatever floats your creativity boat is awesome. Next I'm going to take my circle with the circles and these are here to help you um, evenly space out your petals. And obviously as you're gluing them down it becomes kind of increasingly more difficult to see but um, they're, they just kind of help a little bit. If you want your petals to be even more close together and more scrunched up then when you're making them, you can curve them even more than I did and glue them closer together. So as you can see on one of my original flowers, I glued these large petals closer in on that circle with the circles to make it a bit smaller. I'm gonna put some glue here. And glue this and you know if you hold it up to some light and you can see through you can kind of like I can see that the circle is kind of more or less there which is close enough for me I'm gonna work my way around gluing the five petals 
down. Oops. I don't know why I just put that on the bottom, but that will that'll do too. So by no means does this need to be exactly precise because no one's going to be able to tell anyway and secondly it looks more natural and lifelike if it's not completely uniform anyways if you ask me. So there are my five petals. I can glue this right in the center. So I'll take my hot glue gun, put a nice healthy glob all around, and place that right in the center. If you want your petals to be even more close together and more scrunched up, then when you're making them, you can curve them even more than I did and glue them closer together. So as you can see on one of my original flowers, I glued these large petals closer in on that circle with the circles to make it a bit smaller. So if you're ready to hang your flower, now you can glue these one on top of the other back to back to create a nice strong hanger. And then decide which way you want your flower to hang. So if this was the top, then you could put some hot glue on the back of this and hang it or and glue it onto the back so that the little hole will be able to be used as a hanger. Now if you're making the large flower, we've got this hexagon and six shapes that are like this. So this maximizes an entire piece of 12 by 12 paper. And again, it's up to you how curved you want your petals to be. So if you want them more curved like this, you know, you could even you could even take a look and think about it. You know, how curved do I want them to be? And how close in do I want them to be? So if they were more sticking out, your flower's gonna be a lot larger. If they're more in, it's going to be smaller. If it's more tight, it's going to be more dimensional versus flatter. So it's up to you how you want to do it. I've done a couple both ways. Both ways look awesome. It's just the look that you're going for. So I'm going to overlap these about this much. for all six of them. And then curving your petals again is optional. And what's also optional is whether you do the top edge like this or the two side edges or a combination of both. Whatever you would like to do, you can do. So when you're curving it, the more time you take with these big petals, the more you can get the creases out. If you're doing it real quickly, it kind of creates some little, little creases, which are not the end of the world. They kind of, they kind of look cool if you ask me, but if you are not wanting those, then um, kind of the more you work it, the more you can sort of work those out a little bit or maybe 
upgrade to a larger thickness of whatever it is that you're using to, to curve it. Totally your call. So now we're gonna do the same thing that we did earlier and use this hexagon as kind of a guideline. The points can kind of be a guideline to evenly space apart your petals. And you can decide how close together you want them to be. For example, I could glue this very close in or I could glue it as far out as I want. So to decide, you could put your flower on top and kind of see where you would like each one to be. I'm gonna space these out a little farther than I have with my original flowers because I haven't done that yet. And I'm gonna see how big this bad boy can be. I think that looks really cool. So, I pretty much want these to be just about that far in from the from the corner. So I'm just going to put that much on. And I'm just going to line up these these here just like that. I think that works. So again, this arrangement here is different than what I did before. I have them more spread apart. So this is gonna look a little different. If you want yours to be a little tighter, again, you can glue yours more closer in instead of on the edge. That's awesome. This one's huge. It's flatter than the ones I made before, but it is ginormous in a cool way. So I'm gonna cover the center with some more glue. And plop this right on down into the center. So to hang it, I'm gonna glue these pieces together, one on top of the other, to create a strong shape. And then I'll hot glue this onto the back with the hole exposed just enough at the top so that hanging it is easy. with with a little command hook or you could hang it with twine or string or ribbon or a nail, whatever your situation is perfect for. If you're hanging it in a freshly painted wall in a room, maybe you want to use a command hook or if you are not concerned about your wall, maybe it's not all pristine and you want to just use a nail, that's cool. If you're making this for a party and you're really concerned about the wall that you're hanging it on, or if it's a temporary structure like a tent or a little pergola or like a, a wedding arch, then maybe you want to use some ribbon or string to hang it. So, I want to be able to hang mine with this being the top of my flower up here. So, and I could probably get away with the hole being here. So I'm going to just put glue here, except that I'm running out, I'm running out of glue. So hopefully I can just jam it in there. <laughs> and that will work. Holy cow, this is a big one. If 
Finally, for your leaf elements, these are pretty straightforward. The way that I did mine was I just added a little glue and curved it like this. And then I just um, placed them around my flowers with this bottom part kind of hidden behind the flowers wherever I thought that it looked nice. So if you curve it more, it's going to be more dimensional. You can make it flatter. You could even um, kind of crease it a little bit if you want to. I like mine just like this. But all the leaves from big to small are the same, same shape, same concept. And then there are these guys, which you can, if you want to use your, your tool again to carefully crease it, you could. But what I did with mine was just, just a gentle little fold all the way around. And again, once you place your flowers where you want them to be, flower or flowers, then you can go in at the end and add however many of these you want to add also. When I did mine, I just used the, uh, the four shapes that are in the leaves folder. But again, if you want to go in your extras folder, you have all these saved individually also so that you can do whatever you would like with each shape. So there you have it. That's how to make all of the new wallflowers. I hope you are super excited about them. And if you make some, you'll have to share a picture with us and tell us all about what you made them for. Um, you could share a picture on our Facebook wall or on Instagram, on your blog, and then pin it on Pinterest. Like I always say, however you like to share, I always love to see, and so do the rest of our crafty friends. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time, and happy crafting.